coming from. Okay, so we're going to just do a short drill to get you used to this. And we're going to love this drill because I remember the last time we did it. Okay, so from here, uh, Sean's going to just put his two feet over here and he's going to stand. Okay, all we're going to do is just kind of like hold. Just You can put the hands on both of his shins if you want to. One leg is coming up the middle with the foot behind the, the glute. Okay, and the other foot is going to come around the outside so that the foot is trapped underneath my arm here. Okay, and we're just going to go here. Stamp. So, stamp on the hip, knees pinched together, drop, other side, okay, you can see, I'm not even borrowing like holding the foot for now, just have the hand on the shin here like this, okay, and then, okay, all we're trying to do is just get used to getting into the position, um, it's not going to be our guard entry today, it's just a little bit of a drill. What I'm going to encourage you to do is when you go back, lift your uh, butt off the mat and get your core engaging your body straight. So what I don't want to see is anybody kind of doing this, the knees up to their nose. Okay, instead when you come up, you can see, I'm trapping and I'm leaning on his knee. Okay, pinch your knees together, your knees should be as close as possible for the tightness, okay? And then switch sides. We're good to go. Let's go. Three, two, one. Hug his leg with the shin to shin position, so it's a little bit split. It's going to stay kind of square. What I'm going to do is we're just going to combine this with a little bit of a warm up. So we're going to rock back, sit up, put our shin in front of our opponent's shin, hug his leg, put our ear to his thigh, and go back. Notice that my knee is on the outside. My instep is on hugging tight to his ankle as well. So here like this, I'm not like here. It's kind of almost butterfly hooking his Achilles. And I hug and put my ear on his thigh. Back. Repeat. Let's go. Uh, as like a really good entry to like a nogi guard. So I know some of you are relatively new to nogi. So, um, if you think about the guards that you know from the beginner's classes or whatever, so we close guard, okay, which we can use, it's very adaptable for nogi as well. Um, spider guard, which was dependent upon hooks. Um, the half guard is more or less, as we did a half guard last week, and you can see there's a lot of similarities there and a lot of, a lot of crossover between nogi half guard and gi half guard. But um, in terms of an outside guard, so a guard that I, I, I can use from out here, it becomes pretty limited to go to the upper body. So if I want to go to the upper body with Sean, uh, when the two of us are, are sparring Nogi, to get from, from here to like underhook to anywhere like this, it's very, very difficult, okay? And even just to get to the clothes, I have to go all the way up, climb here. So it becomes very hard. So what we need is, we need an attack and a, a, a guard that we can attack with when our opponent is in the standing position and one that gets us underneath him as well. And that's going to be the key. Um, with a lot of guards in, in Gi, you can have the opponent out in front of you. I'm just going to imagine spider guard here. Out in front of you. you know, Dela Hiva, like he's out in front of you. But when you're trying to play an open guard, in no Gi, that becomes very, very easy to defend against because of the lack of grip. So if I want to try and like play any sort of open guard out here, it's very difficult for me. So my key is going to be to get underneath him today, okay? So we're going to combine the two things that we've done so far in the, uh, in the warm-up. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go shin to shin and hug his leg. Yeah. Okay, his legs are always available to me unless he's on his knees, in which case I'll have to elevate him. But if he's on his knees, he's slower and I've got more of an opportunity to get to my guard, okay? And I'm going to be tight. So the key to the first movement we're going to do today is to get his kneecap on my chest here. I'm going to create this C grip on the other leg to prevent him from stepping close to me. So I'm going to frame out here like this, okay? Everything about this next movement that we're going to do involves you lifting his leg with his, with his body, okay? Or with your body, excuse me, and having his weight on top of you. So what I'm going to do now, I put my left hand to the knee here, I fall on my left shoulder, kick my other leg underneath and fall, okay? Notice that my, his knee stays connected to me here. Okay, this case connected to my chest. 
This leg is the one up the middle, and the other one then kicks straight. And we're in our single leg X guard position then. Okay, let's look at that slow again. Again, focusing on this being off the mat, okay? He, you pull him on top of you. What I don't want to see anybody do is here. Sliding underneath. In real, real time, your opponent will be long gone because he's got perfect balance. So when you bring him up on top of you, you'll notice that Sean's hands, when I went to do it, went on the mat. That's ideal. If his hands are on the mat, his leg is light. Okay, if he's at two feet on the mat, both legs are heavy. Okay, so when I go here, watch Sean's hands. And look, the leg is elevated. Knee up the middle, kick, stamp here. I'm just gonna tell you to keep your elbow on the mat. Don't worry about the footlock for now. Keep your elbow on the mat. Foot off the mat. Good to go. Let's go three to it. We had this discussion last week, didn't we actually? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, we did. The self from not good. Alright, so um, I'm just going to just show, I'm showing one person this, but this is really important because um, if I just use this as like, um, just like if I put my hand here and just do nothing with it, Sean's pretty solid on this foot, and I can make this space between his legs, which um, is really, really important. So when I frame against this, I'm going to make it like this, and the whole time, he can't step with that now, do you see? He can't really use that leg because of that frame. And that gives me that bit of extra time and bit of extra space to put him, put him into the guard. If you leave your leg soft, or your arm soft against the leg when you go under, potentially he's got the opportunity to, to move just a little bit and prevent you from coming up. So, uh, focus on that. So from what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the, the basic sweep. So from here, all the other stuff we're gonna to do tonight is gonna to be off this sweep, okay? Whether it's foot locking or guard passing, it's gonna be off this sweep tonight. So from here, I fall to my shoulder, not my back. I bring him here, hips off the mat, elbow down on the mat. I'll show in a second why that's really, really important. The sweep here is gonna be just to get my body weight and place it like just above his knee. Okay, that's what I'm, I'm trying to do. I'm gonna lift up, body weight onto the knee, and his foot trapped by my elbow. So when I do that, I'm gonna come up, knock, down sideways, okay? So body weight onto the knee, here. From here, just keep the foot for now, and bottom foot lock at him just yet. Lee, down foot lock. Just yet. Let's look at that. So, there's our frame. Comes up, up, and to your uh, uh, right side in this case, but straight to the side, not backwards. Elbow trapping the heel. I'm going to explain why. If my hand is up here like this and I'm like hungry just to grab his foot, Sean's knee can easily turn. Okay? And he's going to be able to escape with the foot trapped. Sorry, yeah. If the, with the foot trapping the heel, when he goes to try and do that, his foot is stuck. He can't turn his heel. If he can turn his heel, show the heel turn. Okay. We got other things that we can do later on when we get more advanced, but for now we're gonna try and stop him from doing that because that's his move. Okay? So block his heel with your elbow, hips up, knock against the knee. Straight to the side. Just hold here, we're not gonna do anything else. All good? Let's go. Three to one. Sweep somebody with this sweep is immediately after you pull the guards because if you think about what we did just here when we when we got into the guard, we made them put their hands on the mat. What are they gonna do? They're gonna try and stand up tall. If we wait for them when they stand up tall just to get their balance, then it's they're they're gonna have a chance to, to pass or to start to working on some of their escapes. So if we wait, Sean comes up here now, gets his balance, he's gonna start passing, okay? He's gonna to wanna to try and do some of his guard passes from here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw them as hard as we can. We're gonna think about entering the guard by like throwing them. Bring them off. Off balance them as much as possible. 
so that when they come up, they got to come up either suddenly or, or, or off balance. And then we're going to hit the sweep straight away. So from here, we go here. When he comes up, it's like straight down. Okay. Let's have a look at our, his foot. So it's just, we're not going to do a real seminar, right? But once this foot goes across here and you're playing with this foot, in IBGGF rules, you're going to get a straight DQ. Okay? Uh, accidental, or your opponent pushes it, you might get away with a warning and a reset. But if you're attacking the foot like this, and this foot goes like here, across this belly button, across the center line, okay, you're done. So be very careful with that. Keep your foot stamped on the hip. I like the toes on the outside. Some people do this, I don't know why, but I like the heel. Pinching the knees here like this. Your job now, right? Your temptation here when you do the foot lock is gonna be to like grab as much of the foot as you can, like really get in here. And you will, yeah, tap some people through pain with that. But actually what we're gonna try and do here is put his Achilles just on your thumb. Here, as low to the heel as we can. Connect the hands. I'm on my elbow. I'm gonna squeeze with my lat. And I'm gonna come off my elbow so that my elbow goes behind me. Okay, the goal is to do this. Okay, here. Okay, so once we landed, shallow thumb, right at his heel bone, I can feel his heel bone right here. So this part of his foot, right at the heel, I can feel here, not like a squidgy part of his calf or his Achilles. I can feel it right here. First things first, last. Drop your elbow behind you, so don't let me see you fall like this. There's no additional pressure on Sean's foot there. That's gonna be your finish, okay? That's our first finish. All right, so two things there. One is, we've done the foot lock in detail before. If you haven't done it before in detail, just call me over. Um, first one, catch them on the way up to put them down again. And the second one then finish there, yeah? Good to go. Three, two, one. Same thing, but this time like, here, let's go for it. Okay, so, um, there's a number of reasons I might not want to foot lock him, right? The first one is, is that maybe uh, he's a good leg locker, I know this, and I don't want to play this game. But I've got the sweep, I've got my position that I want, uh, and i got him on his back, so I may not want to, to finish. Second, I might have tried the foot lock, it's not happening for me, he's defending well, okay? Third, this might not be a jiu-jitsu match, this might be a fight, and I want to get on top as fast as I can. Okay, I'm gonna get up on top. So from here, and any other reason you can think of as well. All right, so from here guys, what I wanna do is I wanna get on top of like a good guard pass. Yeah, I can just like disengage and come up, but I'm gonna come up into his guard and, and create maybe problems for myself in that way. Or the second thing is if I disengage and I just slide back to try and escape this foot back to come underneath him, he's gonna be doing the same thing at the same time. And it's gonna be a race to the top. So I have control of this leg, so I'm gonna keep control of this leg, okay? So what I'm gonna do, pinch, two on one, sit back, and wrap it over the other side. I'm gonna tuck it underneath my other arm. We got finishes from here as well. We can do with the foot lock, but we're not focusing on that today. And now I'm gonna grab his top tie here with my hand, or the top of his tie, I should say, sorry. With my hand, like I'm doing the, the leg drag, okay? So you can see it's kind of positioned here like this. Now I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna keep pulling this behind me until my lat now is in in front of his knee. Now I'm gonna escape up here like this. And you can see his tie is pretty much underneath my armpit, pretty much behind me. Reach for his far hip and come across. And we're just gonna finish on top, okay? Let's have a look, uh, shall we just go to the other side? See Let's look at that again. So once the sweep happens, tuck it underneath your armpit. I've got my hand right here on the top of his knee, and I'm gonna come up. What I'm looking to do is to try to get this knee like behind my lap. If it doesn't go like all the way behind your lap, it's not gonna be a problem too much, as long as I do it like quickly enough and I get to the far side folding his knees. Escape your the foot that was on his hip. Goes just behind you, you can see that's really where that knee goes behind me now, after that. This hand is going to the far hip, like so. 
So now Sean was trying to escape that Neo. Should be reasonably really difficult. Can't stay there forever. And now we're going to travel across. The folding pass. How's that? Yeah? Let's go. Three, two, one. 